Hey everyone, welcome back to the Doing It At Home podcast. If you're new to this space, I'm Sarah Bivens and my co-host is my husband, Matthew Bivens. We've been together for about eight years now, married for six, and in 2016, we had our home birth with our daughter, Maya, which is what inspired this whole thing, and now here we are four years later and about 300 episodes in, which is pretty damn cool. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so on whatever platform you're using to listen to the show. Follow us on social media at D-I-A-H podcast on Instagram or doing it at home on Facebook. And we have our private Facebook group to engage further with the community, the doing it at home birth group. So you can find the links to all of this in the show notes, our Instagram profile link or our website, D-I-A-H podcast.com. So today's episode It's another bonus for you in September as we celebrate for years, and we're getting very real here. So this episode is Matthew and I talking in a very candid and informal way about some things that we've been going through. We didn't sit down recording an episode in mind. It was more so a cathartic way to process what we were feeling. And then after the fact, we decided it was important to share this with you all. So in the spirit of vulnerability and transparency, because it's what we did when we were going through our pregnancy and our birth planning four years ago, and because someone out there can benefit from our sharing this. It'd be different to talk about all of this on the other side of things, you know, with those rose colored lenses, but there's something about the visceral, this is happening right now kind of thing. So again, this is a raw, in the moment feelings kind of thing, and it's a journey and it's a healing process. And we thank you so much for allowing us to share it with you and thank you for listening. So here it is. All right, Mama. Okay. We're recording. So this is interesting because we didn't plan on doing this. Yeah. And don't really know where how to start it or anything like that. But I guess we were in the sunroom just kind of debriefing after two birth story interviews. Mm-hmm. And I was feeling a little crummy. I think just my energy and my mood was low. I was sharing that with you and you were holding space and and then I looked up and you were you had tears in your eyes. Yeah. You still look like you have some tears in your eyes right now. They're in the back of the eye sockets. <laughs> they're not they're not on my face yet. <clears throat> and so we were just chit chatting a little bit and just sharing some of the stuff that's been coming up for us lately, separately and together. Mm-hmm. And we thought, you know, let's just record this. Yeah. And yeah. Practice putting some stuff out there that is sort of in the moment. That's kind of what you were saying. Like if we decide to publish this, then folks who listen to it get a glimpse into what it sounds like and looks like and feels like when we're kind of in it. Yeah. In the realness, the raw, the vulnerable and transparent, and it doesn't have to sound pretty. And however, in whichever way it is shared or put out there, you know, that, We'll, we'll set up that context for it and, you know, have a separate thing. But this is just us processing in real time. And this is the way that we've processed so many things in our life together since since originally becoming pregnant with Maya. You know, we've we know what it's like to be on a mic together and talking, just just talking. So here we are with this in six months yeah, six months into <laughs> six months into conception journey. I like open to conceive be- better, more than trying to conceive. Mm-hmm. I don't relate to trying. I don't think that's, <laughs> we're not trying to do anything. We know what we're doing. <laughs> that's true. We're not, yeah, I don't, I just, it doesn't resonate with me. So, one of the cool things that I feel like we've adopted over the years, if there's a term for something or there's an experience that doesn't work for you, shift it. So open to conceive or intentionally conceiving. So and just, it's been six months. Yeah. So just, just a great clarity. Yeah. In March of this year. Yeah. We got clear. We got clear that we wanted to 
to have a second baby. And moved into that process. Yep. And yeah. moved into that in lovemaking and making deposits. Yes, as we refer to. Yeah, that's how also. we... That, yeah, ejaculation. Yes, making <laughs> deposits. And so, yeah, it's been six months. It's now uh, September, middle of September. Yeah. And this is very uncharted waters for us it's so it's so fascinating i one of the things i was saying to you in the sunroom is i it feels like a a life situation that i just had no (laughs) i had no context for and never ever thought i would see that saw myself in and the Especially because with Maya, we got pregnant immediately. Immediately. The month we said, let's go for it. And then we were pregnant. Yeah. And so. So, And you kind of think that, oh, that's how it happened the first time. So maybe that's, that's how it happened the second time. Yeah. It's, it's messed with me a little bit over time at different points over the past six months that has messed with me a little bit. And then it's also kind of made me feel like an asshole honestly at times when I've thought that's how it would be going into the second one so that sort of assumption on my part just made me feel kind of like a jerk in the sense of like you thought it was going to be the same or you thought it was going to be that easy again or I don't know I don't know what that is but yeah so yeah I think it would be interesting to just share what comes up for us what has come up for us? Yeah, because it's 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 been an evolution, right? It's been kind of thinking from that first month that we were going to get a positive pregnancy test that first month to, oh, okay, not the first month, but it's definitely going to be next month then, or at least I'm trying to think back, you know, and we did have a conversation. We recorded a conversation, I think, in that first month or maybe the second one, and we were sitting out in the living room. I remember that, and I was in that stage where I have no symptoms of anything, but it could be either way. I remember having that conversation and we were also still aligning energetically and emotionally and spiritually with each other too, in terms of, you know, when we made our deposits, what sort of mindset were we in? What sort of, how are we framing? How are we setting the space for that? Was it coming more out of duty or was it kind of feeling like this obligatory thing? Or were you feeling like someone that was just needed for their sperm? And was I feeling like this machine that I just made sure I took the right vitamins and was eating the right things? You know, we've evolved, you know, in that. Every month of these six months has been very different. Yeah, for eat, yeah, each one very much like its own little lifetime. Yeah, because it's so interesting because, you know, what I've learned is that you have ovulation windows. Yeah. And there's le- there's days when the hormones are higher and, you know, you want to, I guess, scientifically, you want to make the deposit within the window. And so I know for myself, those first few months, it definitely felt like a process. It felt very mechanical. Mm-hmm. Like this day, window closed, window closed. Oh, window's open. Time to make a deposit. It was very hard for me to get into that, feel connected. Because it, it did feel just like I was just a sperm machine. Yeah. I didn't like that feeling at all. I get and it. And then after those couple of months, we talked about it. You know, we really talked about it a lot, which was which was difficult to talk about because I felt... Um, like what's wrong with you you aren't able to you don't want to connect with Sarah or you feel like you have to will yourself into reaching orgasm like it it just all the sorts of conversations went through my mind that was like the first two months and then I think I guess what month three or four is when you started to look at the different ovulation trackers like the the chart that we have in the refrigerator you had the app already yeah yeah because i'd been tracking my period just to track my period anyway so yeah once we moved into the conception conversation i was just looking at that now more interested in the window of ovulation than when i would be getting my period so it's like Mm -hmm. it was the same app just the focus around it kind of shifted and that i I started kind of getting disillusioned I guess you could say or even frustrated with that after maybe the third month because there was a month where my period came four days late that was an epic mind fuck 
And yeah, right. Just waiting like, oh, four days. Okay. Right. And then so the period hits. Then that was weird. And so then I wasn't trusting the tracker anymore. And about midway through the six months, like I, I wasn't trusting, like I said, the tracker because I'm like, it's not even telling me when I'm ovulating correctly. Then if my period came four days late, that meant the day we were making our prime deposits wasn't actually. So then that was messing with my brain. And so I'm like, I'm just going to be in touch with my cervix. And I'm just going to communicate with my cervix and I'm going to look at my cervical mucus and my fluid and the, the location of my cervix, right? And if it's hard, if it's soft, if it's high, if it's low, if it's open. So I was, there was one month, maybe two, where I was very cervix focused, even though I kept using the apps, I was just more so like my body's going to communicate to me. And then a friend recommended this astrological fertility calendar that I got offline and you know, with my birth date and everything. And it's like your chart, it's your, it's your fertility chart. And so I just looked at that as, you know, there are a lot of modalities, there are a lot of tools and I'm not attached to one and it's going to be a combination of everything. It's not just going to be one thing. So I was kind of excited about that in the sense of just, it, it, it allowed me to relax a little bit when it came to like the one app I had been using and what's going on. And just, I was seeing that as there, there are a lot of possibilities then another month goes by and the blood comes and you're like, well, fuck. <laughs> and yeah, you, know, you weren't laughing. It wasn't like what you just said. It was like, yeah, you know, somber. Yeah. I remember maybe two months ago I woke up in the morning and it was probably the cervix focused month because I went to check my cervix and see where it was at. And when I pulled out my finger, it was covered in blood. I remember calling you to the bathroom because I don't know, just in that moment, I wanted you there. And then I know you looked at me and looked at my hand and, you know, made the connection and yeah. So the latest evolution this past month was the introduction of the ovulation sticks. And I was excited about that too, because like I said, something new, never, never knew what that process was like or how to do that. So I, I got those ovulation sticks and peed in a cup one to two times a day for a period of time. And that one thing that I will say, even within the, the rawness of how I might feel emotionally, I have appreciated the education, so to speak. I feel like I've gained in terms of my body and what it's doing and the process of conception. And when I did those ovulation sticks to see, you know, they indicate what your levels are and at your peak, according to this, then you're going to ovulate like within the next 12 to 24 hours. So that is prime time, so to speak. And to just see the level go from you know, 0.5 to less than 24 hours later, 0.8, and then four hours later, 0.95, and then 24 hours later, 0.5 was pretty cool in that sense. And and probably even a little bit more disappointing when I, I did get so. my period two days ago. Yeah, and like, oh, we were, you, you know, we did it right in the window when the the numbers sure are did. supposed to be. We sure did. <clears throat> yeah, and I think my, so over the course of the six months, we've done something different every month. Mm-hmm. Right, and then we have to, I know for me, I have to get with the new thing that we're trying. Okay. You know, and I, and I work on letting go of the whole process behind all of it because I don't really like feeling as if this is a, a, a process. Mm-hmm. It doesn't feel organic and it doesn't feel the way that i would want it to feel so over the months like every time we try something different it's okay i'm gonna get behind this new process i'm gonna work on not getting so attached to the process but inevitably i do get attached because i think oh this is what we were missing we didn't do the ovulation tracker in months one through five but now we have it in six that's why we didn't get pregnant in months one through five so then you know it's a to have the cycle return it's like what the fuck i think i shared this with you yesterday in a moment of just sort of just feeling it being like can we just know like what's going on like i just want to know you know because then i think once you have information you can do something about it right now i feel like i don't have any information yeah you know it's like okay is, are my sperm low am i you know is like what whatever it is i don't care what it is i just want to know it's kind of tough not knowing Mm -hmm. 
just like why yeah you know and then i think for me i I end up going to this place of kind of getting away from the scientific why and going into the, the higher why of okay well clearly it's not the right time Clearly, we're not meant to be pregnant right now. Otherwise, we would be pregnant. Mm-hmm. And then that sometimes makes me feel comforted because I can say, okay, then I'm just going to relax and just have faith. And then at other times, I think, well, damn it, all the reasons why I want to be pregnant right now are great reasons in my mind. One of the biggest reasons for me is I want Maya to have a sibling when she's of a certain age. Yeah. And that attachment to that is what makes it hard Mm -hmm. you know and i I think to myself okay she keeps getting older and older and older and older so she won't necessarily have the experience that i want her to have right i don't know if it's the best experience i don't know if she'll even want that experience but it's like i want her to have that experience so i'm attached to that you know i want her to be young enough to be able to be close to her sibling. i guess that's my story that if she's eight when she gets pregnant and when we get pregnant and she has a sibling, then maybe she won't be close to, to that, to that child, that, um, her brother or sister, but I have no idea. I, I, I'm just making that up, Mm -hmm. but I'm attached to it. And so as the months tick on, and again, it's only months, it's not years, Mm -hmm. but as the months tick on, that becomes more of a, like the, the age difference becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. And so I'm I'm sort of understanding that as I let go of that, I think a lot of my feelings around this stuff will will, will relax. But I don't really know how to let go of it right now other than reminding myself that clearly we're not supposed to have a a baby right now. Otherwise, we would. Like Clearly, there's something bigger going on that we just don't know right now. Mm -hmm. And we talked about this about a month ago. Like in hindsight, whenever we do get pregnant, if we get pregnant, we're going to know exactly why we didn't get pregnant in the moment yeah. we wanted to be like, like all the oh, clarity yeah. comes and yeah the clarity all makes in hindsight. It's like, oh yeah oh yeah like because we had xyz going on and that's what we needed to focus on and oh that makes so much sense so i'm just sort of in that space of just i don't know it's not fun every month it's not it's not a fun feeling to like make those deposits get close to when the cycle would start and just be like, okay, I wonder, is this the month? Is this the month? Mm-hmm. And then, nope, wasn't the month. So now we got to wait a whole another month. It yeah. feels, those months feel long. Yeah. And I've shared some of this with you. I feel like me being the person who gets the first intel, so to speak, I do stuff with that sometimes and will feel some sort of either weird responsibility or guilt or I wonder what should I share with you? When should I share it with you? How should I position it? You know, whatever, whatever that is. And that that's been an interesting thing to look at as well, to not feel like, sorry, my period just started, you know, or, or if I'm thinking something because of what my body might be telling me, you know, when and what do I share kind of thing that's, that's come up for me. And such an interesting journey that you cannot fake you cannot outsmart you cannot rig and there yeah you said something earlier about how you'd want it to feel like it hasn't at times hasn't felt how you want it to feel i'm kind of paraphrasing but we it's i'm keying in on when you said the new thing each month and kind of getting used to that or whatever and how do you know how you want it to feel or in your vision of what your best scenario of all of this is organic not tracking anything like not no calendars no nope. we didn't do it the first time not to this level, at least. No, because it was just, hey, let's see if we can do this thing. <laughs> yeah. I just, you know, I I get caught up in that stuff. And then in my mind, that's the reason why it didn't work before. The reason why it didn't work in month two is because now in month three, we have the astrological conception calendar. That's mm-hmm. what we were missing. 
So now that we have it, great, we should get pregnant. Mm. And then we don't, and I feel that down. I'm like, fuck, what, what? Okay, so, oh, you know, it's because we haven't used ovulation sticks. Okay, now we're using ovulation sticks. Oh, we're watching the levels go up. Perfect, this makes a lot of sense. You know, and so at the one hand, I get excited because we have a new thing. On the other hand, I don't want to get my hopes up. And then I, <clears throat> that's so different than how Maya was conceived. You know, Maya was conceived around us having conversations, talking amongst ourselves and figuring out what, what was the best time for us to grow our family, having our own criteria in place and checking off the boxes and then saying, okay, are you ready? Like, yeah, I'm ready. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's do this. And then we just went, that's what I want. Everything else has felt like. The only word that I keep using is process, but it's just sort of felt like we need to do all these different steps to get there. And without having answers as to why the steps don't work, that's the most frustrating part. Because mm -hmm. again, if, if I knew like, okay, we're going to get pregnant in a year. If I just knew that, and then I knew you need to do these things in order to get pregnant in a the year, then I could, I could lock myself in and say, okay, great, let's do that. I'm locked in, but not knowing how long it takes and then wondering if it's because we're not doing something or we're, we're missing some key piece of information that is unsettling. Mm -hmm. And then that challenges my sense of peace around all of it. I think as it's gone on in the back of my mind, I'm always wondering like, was this deposit today the one or was it yesterday's deposit or is it, do you know what I mean? You just never know. And this yeah. has been pretty raw for us. I mean, I remember the first couple of months sharing how I was feeling about just the, the, all of the stuff. Like it was, those weren't easy conversations. To no. Have. And call them breakdowns, whatever you want to call them. They would usually happen like the day or two before I was expected to ovulate at least some of them. So I remember being yeah. like, of course, for fucking going through this and this is like game time. Of course. <laughs> oh yeah, it was like, it, it was, we would have a breakdown and then the next day it was supposed, or that day we we're supposed to make a, like a deposit. Yeah. And oh. then that's where I would just feel like I was, you know. Not in the space for that. Yeah, like I gotta psych myself up for something. And I yeah. thought, that's not, I don't need to psych myself up to make love and reach orgasm. I'm like, what the fuck is that? I don't want to, I don't want to, come in that space i don't want to deposit in that yeah. mental space yeah I and then it. i've questioned that is that the reason why we aren't pregnant because i had made deposits in that mental space of mm -hmm. feeling like okay we need to do this today because the chart says this is a window yeah rather than let's do this because that's what what's what we're feeling yeah it's like oh well of course we're not pregnant because my heart wasn't in it the way that i would want it to and then that shit creates guilt yeah and you know what i mean it's like man it's tricky it's yeah it's one of the things that i've come to the working beliefs and mantras i'm rolling with right now is that i'm clear all of this is a spiritual journey and not a physical one and and there's just so many contrasting things that can happen at one moment in one moment you know there's a, a dichotomy of thoughts and feelings like when you talk about no calendars no anything you know a resistance comes up in me like then it could take potentially longer you know in, in my mind you know if we do just if I don't look at a single calendar and we just kind of go off on a whim so to speak or we're just you know making deposits when we feel like it or whatever like that's more time and so there's that and then there's like but isn't that true faith like just letting it all go and and yeah so there's a lot of different so conflicting much. people that show up in my head <laughs> with different yeah, I get it. opinions on it and in ways of going about it and one of the things that I said yesterday so my period came yesterday and Maya's birthday was a couple days ago and another thing that's warped my brain is you know each month thinking about 
getting pregnant and when I would find out I was pregnant or when that would mean I would give birth, you know, thinking about those things and looking for connections with that. So I remember being really excited months ago about being able to potentially tell you on Father's Day oh, that we yeah. were going to be pregnant, that we were pregnant. And then uh, whatever whatever else came next or when I would likely, you know, the window in which our guest date would be, oh, that's cool because then baby's birthday will be here or baby's sign will be this or, you know, it'll be cool to be pregnant in cooler months or, what you know, whatever, all that comes up. And then, of course, more recently with Maya's birthday happening just a couple days ago and knowing that I would either find out I was pregnant or find out I was having a period right around Maya's birthday. There was like a cosmic thing going on for me there where I was like, oh, how fitting to find out I'm going to be pregnant around the day I gave birth, you know, like that's, that's amazing. And so anyway. Yeah. And all that stuff just like, I know when I've done that, I've just, I feel like I've set myself up. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and I know I haven't been the most receptive to hearing those things from you because what my brain initially goes to is where, you know, I don't want to set myself up. Like I want to stay neutral. Yeah. I don't want to get excited about the possibility of timing of things and signs Right. Because that makes more attachment for me. And then the letdown feels even greater, you know, and, and that's like, I don't even like, like you said in the beginning, you didn't like using the word try, you know, like we're trying to conceive. Right. Like, no, we're open to conceive. I truly, truly believe when I'm, even when I'm in this like funky space now that when we look back on this, we're going to just understand the timing of all of it. Mm hmm. Like it'll make so much sense. Yeah. And so then because I do believe that there are parts, there are moments when I, I guess I even beat myself up for being let down. And, and like, you know, dude, don't, don't feel let down. Like this is all, it's all perfect. You know? And then I wonder like, how can I just stay in that, that cool faith space? Because what I do remind myself of is we have a daughter. Yeah. Like we have a little one. And I think imagine if we were going through this on our first, you know, and yeah, that would, I, I we just talked to a family that took a year mm -hmm. for their first, Well, we have a little one. And so sometimes I think that the energy that I spend feeling bummed and let down is energy I could be pouring into her. So it, I don't know. It's tough to like allow myself to feel and then to kind of coach myself. Yeah. Oh yeah. And yeah. that's a hard that's a challenge for me to be in that. Yeah. Different brains. Yeah. Yeah. At the same time, like mm -hmm. two things going on at the same exact time. And it's like, when I do feel down, there's a part of me that says I'm not supposed to, mm -hmm. you know, like, Hey, you, you've got tools, man. Snap out. This is what you help people through in your work. Like you can snap out of this. Part of what you said on the gaining understanding as to why we're experiencing all of this at, at some other point on the other side of this is, is part of why I wanted to, talk about this <clears throat> and have this conversation and potentially share it, you know, with doing it at home in the spirit of the sharing, the transparency, the openness, because that's what we did with our birth. That's what we did with our pregnancy. And at times it's felt like, you know, something too personal, quote unquote, or too raw or, or whatever, or, you know, where do you bring people in on something that you're real time processing? Mm -hmm. And I have faith and trust and confidence in who we are and the work that we do on ourselves individually, as well as a couple and a family where we can do that because we are flanked by our community and the things that we have to be able to share it in this way. And it's not like we're sharing this and then we're not working on it or we're not processing it or we're not healing it. Yeah. We are doing that. And so I think it's because of that, that I'm open and inspired to share it because it's coming from a place of power and love, despite at times having very low feelings and really shitty stuff that might come up for us. But I, I know someone could get something out of this and connect with it and it just adds to you and me and our humanity and I believe we're going to learn and grow and heal from it as well. That I feel like that's how we were so empowered and confident in our 
birth experience is because we had these conversations. So I think we need to be having these conversations now more than ever to be supporting us in the next time we do it because what I landed on yesterday as I sat with myself as I was bleeding a lot, by the way, bleeding a lot, I sat with this peaceful resolution in myself that I believe we're having another baby. I believe that we're getting pregnant and and having another birth experience. And so if I truly, truly believe that, and I know that's a certainty, then the time frame between now and that moment, it's just, it's just time. It just is what it is. And so if I really, truly believe in the outcome that we're co-creating, then I don't have to get caught up on time of it. It's hard at times, absolutely. And how I felt getting on the mic was was in line with that. And it's helpful to process and it's helpful to share because that is truly where I ultimately lie and, and connect with is is the knowingness of it. So I was having a conversation with somebody uh, about two weeks ago and this was the person I won't name their name, but you remember, babe, I was, I, I was introduced to somebody new. Um, we had a lot of things in common and her and I had had a couple of just like cool phone calls, like just yes. talks together. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we were talking and both of our conversations ended up being around divine timing. Mm. It just happened to go to divine timing of things. Yeah. And, you know, she's she's older than me. She's in her probably late 60s. And so she had some really interesting stories to share around divine timing and how, you know, it was in her 30s that she had this vision for her life and it was in her 60s that it all came around. And for her, just this experience of patience and being in the process and all that. And so I shared with her what we were experiencing right now with our own divine timing process. Yeah. And... You know, she 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 kind of just gave some like thoughts and perspective on it around around that aspect, and it it planted a seed in my mind of well, what if we are only meant to have one? And that's been a hard since that conversation. That's been a hard thing for me to release in terms of why we're not getting pregnant right now. Hmm. Like, well, what if we are just supposed to have one? Yeah. And I'm. You know, I say that because you said in this moment that you feel very clear. Mm-hmm. And I'm happy that you feel clear because I don't feel clear right now. Mm. That's I, real. I know what I want. I believe I know what I want, which is multiple. Yeah. And it's, there's, mo- there's, there's, there's things that I can think of that are, that seem so much fun, like being pregnant again. Yeah. You know, those nine months when you realize you're pregnant, like all, like, how everything changed like that just sounds so much fun again and just the the moments that we shared together the first pregnancy of me massaging you and doing all these things for baby and around baby like that was so connected and so beautiful and so awesome and i want to have that experience again and i want to have a brand new fresh slimy baby in my hands again and i want to know if i'm going to be a two times girl dad or a girl and boy dad yeah. you know like i want to ha- i want to know that and i want to watch maya interact with a little one yeah for sure and then when i search my my like soul my spirit my heart and i think okay am i meant to have another one right now it feels cloudy mm. whether or not it's yes i'm meant to or yes i really want to ah and it was that conversation that i had with her where it just kind of came in my mind like what if we are only supposed to have one like, what if a second baby just totally throws off what we have with Maya? Or what if she has a really hard time with that and doesn't ever recover fully? And so I, that sort of tripped me up a little bit in my, my like, mentally gotcha. for this process. Yeah, I didn't know any of that. Oh, I'm sharing with you right now. Yeah. And I think it's been very interesting to be six months into this where every single week we've done one or two birth story interviews. <laughs> like that hasn't been easy. We did two today. Yeah. And I could I could tell that my a little bit of my my focus was stretched. You know, cuz we're hearing these amazing stories of 
baby number one or baby number two or number three and all this. And a big part of me really wants that for us. And so it's been a little challenging for those six months. And I think that I've done a really, really great job of getting very present with the moms and dads and that we've talked to. And there's been moments when it's been tough, you know, and today's interview was interesting because it gave me the sense of like hope, I guess, even though that's not a, uh, that's not something that I really identify with, but it, it did because the mom and dad we talked to shared that it took them a year for baby number one. Yeah. And I was like, oh, well, okay. I hadn't really heard of, of that. Yeah. Like you mentioned, we don't know anybody that I have took... not had a personal conversation with anyone Me who it took them longer than a couple months. I mean, I'm sure I know people I'm and sure obviously we know. we've talked to them, but I have not for my own purposes had a conversation with someone who it took any longer than a couple of months to get pregnant. Well, if we have heard if I know we've had heard those stories on the podcast. Right. But we were never in this space to be experiencing it ourselves. Right. To then go down the lane of asking questions about it. Exactly. It, it may have just been like, oh, wow, it took you all 14 months. Like, wow. Like, okay. Wow. But I have no idea. We, yeah. No context for that. But now we're in it. And so I was sharing with you after that interview wrapped. I said, I wish I'd asked them more questions. Yeah. Like, hey, what advice do you have for us? What would you tell us? Like, husband, what would you tell me? Because I'm going through this. Mm -hmm. separate from Sarah, you know, like, like what? because I sometimes feel like I'm flying blind in this, like how to, how to process it and relate to it and just be at peace. That's one of the things that I, I play for most frequently is just peace, just being in a place of peace. And I feel like through this, it's been an up and down every month. Something is inserted that, takes me off that piece so i think right now i'm more open to seeking out just support around it whether it's looking at stuff online whether it's reaching back out to the people we interviewed today mm -hmm. whether it's just asking other people you know and, and, and finding folks who've gone through it who can share what's been helpful i think that's awesome I appreciate you sharing all that. Appreciate you listening. I'm looking at the difference between letting go and versus giving up. Letting go being the more powerful stance on it all. Letting go of attachment, letting go of expectation, letting go of circumstance, letting go versus uh, giving up. And finding what our own, my own version of that is. Yeah, I get you. So we shall see. Mm. Yeah, this is an interesting one where there's no, no, no like, no conclusion. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's kind of like, an ellipsis. hey, we wanted to share. And we were actually sitting in, in our house just having a cup of coffee talking about this stuff. And we were like, hey, you know what? Should we record this? Yeah. Just to record it. And I'm happy that we did. Me too. I don't know if necessarily I feel much better other than just having, I don't know, talked through things in the course of 30 minutes that maybe we have talked about here and there over the course of six months. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm with you on letting go. Just like, just letting go. I mean, we were reading that book, Letting Go. Yeah, David R. Some, Hawkins. Yeah, it had some great, some great um, insight in there. Anything else, Mama? I don't think so. I I would like to, in a separate conversation, I suppose, on how we want to be going from here. You know, do we make an agreement to not look at a calendar? That mainly be for me <laughs> and I would need accountability around that but is that how we want to flow do you know how do we continue to create con the space for conversations like this who how you know do you speak with or connect with that supports you and yeah so that's probably another conversation but I I just feel like that'll be helpful 
going forward and and we do have time obviously I'm going to be bleeding for a few more days here but just just to, to feel on the same page connected and 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 moving forward I support you in doing whatever it is you feel is required for you to be most peaceful in the process whatever that is and if there's overlap in that meaning what is required for you to be feel peaceful is sharing things with me that you think might knock me out of my peaceful space then let's talk about those things and let's talk about how you can share that mm. so for example if i'm not really interested in tracking on calendars and stuff but you are and you want to share certain things with me then you know let's talk about a, a way so that you can be able to share and stay in your peaceful spot while giving me a chance to be able to stay in my peaceful spot around it you know because that's what i ultimately support because i want that for myself i want to be peaceful i want to stay present with you and present with maya i want to stay excited about everything that we have going on right now because we have a lot going on right now and i just want to stay in that joyful space and so I'm not saying that for me that means getting rid of all tracking, all calendars, all that stuff because I realized it's not the calendar and the tools and stuff that was getting to me. It was my attachment to them, mm. right? It wasn't the ovulation sticks. It was me being like, oh, this is this is what, this is going to work. This is the missing piece Yeah, because we didn't have this before. Now we have it now. So that is my opportunity, I believe, to stay in that peaceful space is to be unattached to look at all of this as a process and understand or to do my very best to be in a, in a joyful place through the process, <clears throat> not yep. just after the process is complete. Yeah. Yeah. Destination like, and in the journey. experience. Yeah. You know, how can I find joy in the experience of, Oh, okay. Your cycle started. How can I find joy in that? So that's where I'm at. And I'm, I'm definitely down for more conversations with you about how we can, support each other I saw an Abraham Hicks Instagram post it was like the day one of the months that I got my period and I was seeing if I could yep here it is let what you're living here excuse me let me start again Let what you're living right here and now in this environment be the process that evokes the desire, that summons the life force, that provides the creation of anything. Whatever you have the ability to conceive, this universe has the ability to provide. Anything without exception. So your work is on the conjuring of the idea, period. The universe has the stuff to deliver the goods and will. Yeah, Beautiful. Fitting. Yeah. We've placed the order. It's out there. And it's about connecting with the vision, creating the environment. Which we do well. Yes. I feel like this is a fitting place to conclude. Yeah, I agree. Love you. I love you too. Quick note about the Doing It at Home podcast. Matthew and I are not doctors or medical professionals, and nothing we say should be taken as medical advice or opinion. If you have medical or health-related questions, please take them to a trained professional. We're here simply to entertain you with stories and conversations about pregnancy, birth, and parenthood.